So let us consider the minimax limit. So I say that delta naught is minimax. You know that if it's maximum risk of delta naught, so that means supremum of theta belonging to theta of R delta R theta delta naught or R delta naught theta. I'm using sometimes this function as R theta delta naught, sometimes R delta naught theta, one and same thing, just different notations. So the maximum risk of this is the smallest among all estimators. So that is same as smallest among all estimators means it is infimum over all deltas in class of all estimators and it is the infimum of all maximum risks of delta theta. So this is what uh, uh, the minimax estimator is. Now let me first uh, define what do you mean by a unique minimax estimator. So that definition is exactly the same way we define the unique Bayes estimator. That means if there is any other minimax estimator apart from delta naught, then that estimator would be same as delta naught with probability 1 with respect to distribution of x given theta for every theta. So an estimator, a minimax estimator, estimator delta naught is said to be minimax, is said to be unique minimax. If you have any other estimator which is minimax, that means if for any other estimator which is minimax, that means supremum over. So if for any other estimator delta star which is minimax, that means it's supremum risk of delta, no, delta star. is same as the risk of the maximum risk of the base, sorry, uh, minimum estimator. So primum over theta belonging to theta, R delta naught theta. Then P theta. P theta means probability calculated under the distribution of x given theta of delta star x is equal to delta naught x is 1 for every theta belonging to theta. Or in other words, delta star is same as delta naught or more surely for every theta with respect to distribution of x given theta. So this is what the unique minimax estimator is. Now I know that a Bayes estimator minimizes the average risk. So its average risk is minimum. So that means if Bayes risk estimator has a constant risk, it looks like such a risk estimator would be minimax because the average is same as the maximum risk. So it is also a minimizing the uh, maximum risk in certain sense. So let me write down this result. So delta pi is base with constant risk, base respect to pi, and its risk is constant. So that means R delta pi theta is C for every theta belonging to theta for some constant. See? Then delta pi is minimax. Now in addition, if this delta pi was unique base and it has a constant risk, then it would be unique minimax. So in addition, if delta pi is unique base, and has constant risk, then delta pi is unique minimax. So there's only one minimax. Right, so the proof is just uh, straightforward. 
So what do I have to show? I have to show that if I take any other estimator, then the supremum risk of that estimator would be greater than or equal to this. The only idea which I'll use in the proof is that maximum is always greater than or equal to average. So when you have a, whenever you're talking about a data set, the maximum is always going to talk about the average. Average is kind of a, uh, averaging it over the whole population. So that means smaller elements, larger elements, everything would come. And that would make things somewhere in between, whereas supremum would always be on the one extreme, maximum would always be on the one extreme. So the key to this proof is that supremum is always greater than or equal to average. So let uh, delta be delta naught be any other estimate. Then what you have to show is supremum of uh, de supremum risk of delta naught, so that means supremum over theta of R delta naught theta. You have to show that this is always greater than or equal to supremum risk of delta pi. Doesn't matter. So let us try to see. Now, you know that supremum risk is always greater than or equal to average risk. Just now I told you. So this would always be greater than or equal to the average risk of delta naught theta with respect to prior pi. So that means R delta naught pi, which is nothing but integral over theta, R delta naught theta, d theta. Uh, okay, before that, I can write it down. But R delta naught pi is a base risk with respect to prior pi. But with respect to prior pi, delta pi is the base estimator. So R delta naught pi would always be greater than or equal to R delta pi pi. But delta pi has a constant risk C. R delta pi theta is C. So what would be its base risk? Average of C. But C is a constant, so average of constant would be constant, so R delta pi would be same as C. But if R delta pi theta is same as C, its supremum is also same as C. So this is same as supremum over theta belonging to theta of R delta pi theta. Okay, so this proves that delta pi is Minimax. Why? Because you took any arbitrary estimator delta naught, you saw that the supremum risk of delta naught is always greater than or equal to supremum risk of delta pi. So which proves that delta pi is minimax. Now if delta pi was unique minimax, sorry, if delta pi was unique base, then what happens? So let, so if, uh, now let delta pi be unique base and let Delta one be an estimator. Then what do you get over here? Then supremum of theta, I just repeat the same argument here for delta one. So then if I want I can repeat the supremum over theta. R delta 1 theta. Uh, or let us say what you can do is you can prove it by contradiction also. So now, on contrary, suppose delta 1 is any other estimator such that this is also minimax. That means supreme over theta belonging to theta. R delta 1 theta. 
is same as supreme over theta belonging to theta r delta by theta. Now what I do is uh, I repeat exactly here this argument with delta 1. So I get this kind of inequality. But I have equality from here to here, so that means everything in between would be inequality. So this will imply that, so using 1 and 2, let me call this as 2. So I apply 1 on delta 1, because that was true for any estimated delta naught. If that was true for delta 1, so that means I have an inequality of this kind. But you know that this is equal to this uh, with r delta 1, that is what you have assumed it to. So that means everything in between would be equality, so that means r delta 1 pi is same as r delta pi. But I know that my delta pi is unique base, so if there is another delta 1 with the same base risk, this would imply that p theta that delta 1 x is same as delta pi is equal to 1 for every theta belonging to theta. So this is due to the fact that you have a unique base estimate. Delta pi is unique base. And that is what you have to prove. That means if there is another estimator with the same maximum risk, then that estimator should be same as delta pi with probability 1. So this result uh, can be used in many situations. So what you try to do is, uh, first you try to find out a Bayes rule with respect to class of distributions. Now this class of distributions you choose in such a way that they have certain parameters. And then you try to play around with these parameters so that their risk becomes constant. And then you, so if you can choose such parameters such that risk become constant, so that means you have a prior under which a base estimator has a constant risk. And then by this result, such an estimator would be minimax. So this result can be used in finding minimax estimator, in fact, unique minimax estimator in certain situations. I'll come to that, but before that, uh, let me make a small uh, remark over here. Note that when we are talking about The minimaxity, the minimaxity, in the minimaxity, the constant factor which depends on theta in the loss function, that plays an important role. For example, the minimaxity under the loss function W a theta, where W a theta is some loss function, and L2 theta a as B theta, let us say, times W a theta, where B is some function which only depends on theta. So when I talk about, talk about frequentist risk, so B is positive. When I talk about frequentist risk, I take the expectations, and expectation is respect to distribution of x given theta, so theta is fixed. This comes outside. So two estimators which are comparable in this sense would be comparable in this sense. The same kind of ordering will hold between them in terms of a risk function. But when I talk about a minimaxity, the risk would have a B theta, and in minimaxity, I talk about supremum over the risk. So this B theta is going to play a role. So a minimax estimator under W A theta may not be a minimax estimator under B theta into W A theta, because when I take the supremum in the two situations, they may become different, and if they become different, your minimax estimator may change. So minimaxity depends on what constant weight has been attached to the loss function. As you change this, you get a different minimax estimator. Same thing for base estimator, because base estimator also talks about average of this. So if I take different B thetas, that means I'm talking about different weights to the loss function, and when I take the average to theta, these different weights play a role in giving me different base estimators. So when we talk about uh, base estimators and min max estimator, this weight function B theta 
which only depends on theta attached with the loss function plays a role. Okay, now let's try to see an application of this uh, result uh, in the binomial case. So let us take this uh, example. Yeah. So x1, x2, xn are iid binomial, let us say m theta. Theta belongs to capital theta, which is 0, 1. M is known, a known positive integer. Goal is, uh, I'm interested, my estimate is theta. And the loss function which I am considering, let us say, is A minus theta whole square. Find. The minimax. In fact, in this case, it would be the minimax estimator because the idea is as follows. What I'll try to do is I'll choose a prior which has a certain parameters. Let us say I'll find beta. Then I find try to try to find out a base estimator with respect to such a prior in terms of I'll find beta. So, but uh, base estimator will depend on I'll find beta. I find it frequentist risk. That would also depend on alpha and beta. Now then I play around with this alpha and beta so that risk become a constant. That means it does not depend on theta. If such a choice is possible, then I get a base estimator with respect to the prior for that those choices of alpha and beta, such that base estimator has a constant risk. Now in this case, it is, it is a square loss function, such a base estimator would be a unique base estimator with a constant risk. And so I get the unique minimax estimator. So that is a whole proof I have given. So I have to look at uh, the prior. I have said conjugate priors are many times tractable. So one normally looks for a uh, conjugate prior or sometimes non-informative priors, which are limits of conjugate priors in certain sense. Uh, but to identify what would be a conjugate prior in this case, first let us try to side, write down f theta x, because what I have to do? Conjugate prior is such that the posterior distribution again belongs to the distribution of the prior family. So let us see what is f theta x. Because the moment I have seen I f theta x, I would get the idea of my conjugate prior. So this is same as product i is equal to 1 to m. m choose xi binomial theta to power xi, 1 minus theta to power m minus xi. x, which is x1, x2, xn, belongs to. Any of them can be from 0, 1 to m. So what is this? Uh, this, is, uh, this is some constant, so this is proportional to, because I just look at what is proportionality. Because posterior would be proportional to the joint. And joint is nothing but f theta x into the prior. Now, what I should have a prior for theta so that when I multiply it by this, I again get the same family. So clearly, this is a beta kind of a thing. If I multiply it by theta to power alpha 1 minus theta to power beta, again I get something of the type theta to power t 1 minus theta to power something. So it looks like I should consider the beta prior, conjugate prior as the beta prior. So I choose my prior as beta alpha beta. So I choose two parameters over there. Let us say beta alpha beta, theta to the power alpha minus 1, theta between 0 to 1. So if uh, that is the case, uh, what is the posterior distribution? f of s 
given x, theta given x, it would be proportional to f theta x multiplied by this. So, B alpha beta again gets absorbed into proportionality constant, it becomes theta to power summation x i plus alpha minus 1, 1 minus theta to power n minus summation x i plus beta minus 1. So, in fact, uh, posterior distribution, you know what it is theta given x. Let me write down this as a small t, which depends on x. So, it is 1 upon beta t plus alpha n minus t plus beta theta to power t plus alpha minus 1, 1 minus theta to power n minus t plus beta minus 1. Squared error loss function, so my base estimator is nothing but. So let me write down. So I denote this prior by pi alpha beta. So my delta pi alpha beta x is nothing but the mean of beta. What is the mean of beta? If you don't remember, that's fine. You can always calculate it. It is 1 upon beta t plus alpha n minus t plus beta and then integral 0 to infinity 1 theta would come over here so it become beta t plus alpha plus 1 and n minus t plus beta. So if you want you can calculate this this is gamma a, so gamma t plus alpha plus 1, gamma n minus t plus beta by gamma a plus b, gamma a plus b is nothing but n plus alpha plus beta plus 1. This is 1 upon this, so numerator will be gamma a plus b, so gamma n plus alpha plus beta. gamma a, gamma b, which is n minus t plus beta. So, this gets cancelled with this, gamma t plus alpha and gamma t plus alpha plus 1 over here, that makes it t plus alpha gamma t plus alpha. This becomes n plus alpha plus beta into gamma n plus alpha plus beta, so n plus alpha plus beta. So, delta pi alpha beta x turns out to be this. So, delta pi alpha beta x is nothing but t. Let me write down everything I am writing down in terms of a random variable. So, it is t plus alpha upon n plus alpha plus beta, where t is summation i is equal to 1 to n x i x i's are independent binomial and binomial have a reproductive property when x i's are independent. So, this would have a binomial for each of them number of trials is m, so it would have m n. Probability of success is same for each of them, so it is theta. So, they have a reproductive property, probability of success is same and that is what is happening over here. So, now what I need to do is, so before I go further, before going for a minimum estimator, let me, so this is base. Now, as alpha and beta, I get different base estimators with respect to different priors. So, each of those base estimators, because they are unique base estimators, they would be admissible. So, all the estimators of the type T upon n plus alpha plus beta plus alpha upon n plus alpha plus beta would be admissible as you vary alpha and beta, where alpha can be anything from greater than 0 and beta can be anything from greater than 0, because for each alpha greater than 0, beta greater than 0, this is a proper prior. So, for each alpha greater than 0, beta greater than 0, this is a base estimator with respect to some prior. Now, when I 
C T upon n plus alpha plus beta. So T by n you can take outside. So that becomes 1 upon 1 plus alpha plus beta. So that means I can talk about any constant A. So A times T and then plus alpha upon n plus alpha plus beta would take the various values. So I can talk about admissibility of the estimators of the type A times x bar plus B over here. Okay, so now to find the minimax estimator, if I can get a Bayes estimator with a constant risk. So that means I try to find out one delta pi alpha beta for some alpha and beta whose risk is constant. Then such an estimator would be Bayes corresponding to some admissible alpha beta. And it would have a constant risk, so it would be minimax. Not only that, since it is a square error loss function, such an estimator would be unique Bayes, so it would be unique minimax. So the problem now resolves to finding out a choice of alpha beta, so that risk of this is constant. Let us try to do that. So let us consider R delta pi alpha beta theta, which is expected value of T plus alpha upon N plus alpha plus beta minus theta so again i use the expression for mean square error as variance plus bias square so variance of this quantity variance of this quantity is same as variance of t divided by n plus alpha plus beta whole square so variance of t upon n plus alpha plus beta whole square plus bias of this whole square. So what is the bias of this? Expected value of T plus alpha upon N plus alpha plus beta minus theta whole square. So this is what this turns out to be. But T is binomial M and theta. So what is the T? Variance of T. N P Q. So M N theta into 1 minus theta. So this becomes mn theta into 1 minus theta divided by n plus alpha plus beta whole square plus expected value of t, t is binomial mn theta, so it is mn theta plus alpha upon n plus alpha plus beta so i have to choose uh, theta and uh, yeah so let's try to let me just check uh, my calculation so that uh, if there is a calculation mistake, I correct it right over here rather than doing it something later on. So let me just mn theta plus alpha. Uh, yeah, so that is what I was sus sus uh, suspecting. There should be somewhere, this would be mn plus alpha plus beta should be coming. So how this has happened? Uh, T to power alpha plus beta plus fun. Yeah, because uh, if you look at what was the prior distribution? Prior distribution was uh, theta to power theta to power xi one minus theta to power m minus xi. So it was theta to power summation xi one minus theta to power m n minus summation xi. Right? That is what. And then theta to power alpha minus 1, 1 minus theta to power beta minus 1. So theta to power summation xi plus alpha plus 1, that is OK. Then 1 minus theta to power mn minus beta. So this n should be everywhere mn, actually. Yeah. So that is where I made a mistake. So this everywhere should be mn. Just you can look at the posterior distribution. This would be Mn. This would be Mn. This would be Mn. 
mn, so this becomes d upon mn plus alpha plus beta, so this becomes d upon m plus n plus alpha plus beta, except this n becomes mn, that's all. And one, and that is happening just because I missed this, I just kept it n. Whereas when you are considering the product i is equal to 1 to m, product i is equal to 1 to n of 1 minus theta to the power m minus xi, m would become mn. Okay. So this becomes uh, mn plus alpha plus beta whole square, uh, expect of t plus alpha divided by mn plus alpha plus beta whole square. This becomes mn over here, this becomes mn over here. All right. Now things are simpler. So this becomes uh, mn theta into 1 minus theta divided by mn plus alpha plus beta whole square. Now I subtract this from this, so how much you are left with? So if I see, yeah? So it becomes uh, alpha alpha minus, then theta is there, alpha plus beta theta, right? Because mn theta, mn theta gets cancelled, alpha plus beta theta whole square divided by mn plus alpha plus beta whole square, all right? So I start correcting the terms of uh, theta square. So theta square is nothing but mn. Uh, the, uh, theta square will come here, it will come with the, so alpha plus beta square minus mn theta square. Then theta twice, uh, theta from here I get mn minus from here 2 alpha into alpha plus beta theta and then plus alpha square upon mn plus alpha plus beta. So now I have to choose alpha and beta so that I can make this independent of theta. So that means my risk is constant. Risk is constant, that means it is independent of theta. So this is independent of theta if and only if. This should be zero as well as this should be zero. So that means alpha plus beta should be same as root mn. You see, I need not bother about negative values because alpha is positive, beta is positive, so alpha plus beta has to be positive. So alpha plus beta as root mn, and from here, alpha into alpha plus beta is nothing but mn by 2. So what do you get? So what is the choice of, uh, so from here, I can put alpha plus beta is root mn, so it becomes root mn by 2. So alpha becomes root mn by 2. If alpha becomes root mn by 2, beta also becomes root mn by 2. So this same is alpha is equal to beta is equal to root mn by 2. Which is admissible choice because I wanted my alpha to be anything greater than 0 and beta greater than 0. So this implies that delta pi naught, let me call this as, x, which is this estimator, with the choice alpha is equal to root m by two, root mn by two, and beta is equal to root mn by two. So which is t plus root mn by two by two, mn plus alpha plus beta, which is root mn. is the unique minimax estimator. Why? Because in this case it is a unique base and I've chosen alpha and beta so that risk is constant. So this is the unique
In fact, it is different from T upon Mn with probability 1. T upon n with probability 1. So, uh, yeah, T upon Mn with probability 1. So, certainly T upon Mn is not a base estimator, and which you can clearly see what is the risk of uh, R delta pi naught theta? That you can get just from here because this goes away, this goes away the way I have chosen alpha and beta. Alpha square is nothing but Mn by 4 divided by mn plus alpha plus beta, so mn plus root mn square. So how much do you get? Root mn when goes outside, this mn gets cancelled. 1 upon 4 times 1 plus root mn whole square. So it is a constant risk. So supremum of uh, risk is also the same. I can compare it with the supremum risk of T upon Mn. So let me call that estimator is T upon Mn, which is the UMVE, summation Xi upon Mn, which is the UMVE. So I want to compare this. Of course, I know since this is a unique minimax estimator, the risk of this is going, supremum risk of this is going to be larger than the supremum risk of that. That you can see analytically as well. So let us see. R delta naught theta, which is expected value of T upon Mn minus theta whole square. In fact, this is unbiased estimator, so the same as variance of T Mn, so variance of T by Mn square. Variance of T is binomial Mn theta, so it is Mn theta into 1 minus theta divided by mn square, which is theta into 1 minus theta by mn. I consider what is the supremum of uh, the risk. Now, what is the maximum value of theta into 1 minus theta as between theta between 0 and 1? You can use simple calculus to find the maximum value of theta into 1 minus theta, which would be at theta is equal to half, and the maximum value would be 1 by 4, so 1 by 4 mn. So maximum risk of delta naught is 1 by 4 mn. What is the maximum risk uh, over here? 1 by 4 root mn plus 1 whole square. So this is always less than, sorry, greater than 1 by 4, 1 plus root mn whole square which is the supremum risk of R delta pi theta. So this we could see analytically also, but that was obvious from here because I was dealing with a squared error loss function. For this choice of alpha and beta, I get the unique base estimator. It has a constant risk, so by the result which we did, it would be a unique minimax estimator. So the unique minimax estimator turns out to be this, which is different from T upon Mn. So T upon Mn certainly cannot be minimax. So this was a situation where we found out minimax estimator using the base. So sometimes what may, what may happen is some good estimators which have a constant risk are not base but there may be limit of base. For example, x bar in the normal theta 1 case. If I am dealing with a normal case and I have a sample of size n from normal theta 1, x bar is umv, I know that x bar is not base, although it has a constant, estimate, constant risk 1 by n. So a natural question arises, but I have seen that x bar is a limit of a base. So a natural question arises that you have an estimator which is not base, but it is a limit of base in certain sense. And it has a constant risk. Can I say that it will be minimax? And the answer is yes. So that result which we'll do next time. And once we have done this result, then we'll be in a position to show that in the normal case x1, x2, x and id normal theta 1, x bar is not only admissible, it is also the unique, it is also the minimax estimator. So that will do next time. 
So thank you very much.